Hey, Brett here again, and um, kind of continuing to look at the iPad and particularly web apps. Um, we, we've already looked at what a web app that is basically HTML and CSS, and the CSS is styled specifically for Safari on a mobile browser does. Um, I want to switch gears a bit and talk about JQ Touch. And again, if you've never heard of JQ Touch, Jonathan Stark's book, Building iPhone Apps, is a really great resource. His uh, chapter four, I believe it is, kind of walks you through this. JQ Touch is a uh, kind of a toolkit mostly full of JavaScript functions based on jQuery um, and also has some CSS styles that allow you to build a web app and it will look on the iPhone just like an iPhone uh, native app. It has some transitions, um, the flip and, and sliding in and out and it actually does a lot of the work that um, normally you'd have to do on your own in CSS. So I want to take a look at that. So um, I've got another version of this radar app here, and so I've um, jumped back a level. And again, we will have the files available for download if you're interested in following along. So if I go to uh, this page, um, you're going to notice a pretty big shift, and you're actually going to notice it doesn't look that great right here. Um, this was built basically with an iPhone in mind. So if I move down to the iPhone size, you can see that we have, again, something that looks a little more like a native app. Um, this about button right off the bat is not something that, that is trivial to get with CSS and everything else, but what's really hard to get is um, that little thing. And that flip functionality is, um, is not something you want to be spending your time coding. So we've got that. We've also got all these links that now slide in and slide out and a couple of other tweaks that JQ Touch does. Um, this back button here um, is completely handled by JQ Touch. I don't have to code it. I basically create a link and give it a, a particular class, and JQ Touch handles all the styling. Now, the other really kind of cool thing about JQ Touch is that as good as it looks on a small web browser, it actually works even better on the iPhone. So I want to switch over to the iPhone here in a second, and we'll look and see how JQ Touch does compared to what we've already seen with just straight CSS. And then again, we're going to have this weird middle ground where the iPad kind of looks right, but kind of doesn't. So let's check this out on the devices. So back to the iPhone again, and here's our old HTML and CSS app. Um, we should see big time changes with JQ Touch because we're going to get not just a look and feel that's um, specific to the iPhone, but really the animations, the transitions, and so forth. So I've bookmarked that too conveniently. and. Um, this looks very much like a, a, an actual application you might pull down. I mean, it's still very tech-centric, but we get the About screen, which if I tap, we get this nice kind of effect, and you can see I spent a lot of time styling that page. But um, the main thing is to see you get this Apple effect, and then if you go to, for instance, Open Source, it's going to slide over there, and we get a Back button, and we slide back. So we're getting a very... Um, specific look and feel that's for the iPhone. And honestly, this is the beauty of JQ Touch is it took me, I don't know, two, two and a half hours tops to completely rebuild this site um, looking like an iPhone site. Now the, the question is, what do we get on the iPad? So let's check that out. So let's look at this thing on the iPad. Um, we're going to get another hybrid experience, but what exactly does that look like? Um, if you go to this thing, right away you get a little bit of both worlds, and, and what I mean by that is you get a logo that is clearly optimized for a small device and, and just isn't quite positioned, and honestly we could fix that with CSS, that's no big deal. Um, the About button looks right, and we do get a nice transition, so that is um, pretty good and clean. Now uh, obviously the elephant in the room is this giant black space below hand, and that's a big problem. Um, we'll come back to that. You still do get this um, forward and backward behavior, um, but there is a little bit of flashing. Did you notice that? Let me, let me show you that again. And that's because you've got um, some stuff being loaded and then, and then hidden. And the iPhone, you don't get that as much. It's just the way the library is implemented. Um, if I go to Emerging Tech, for example, we get a back button, but now again, we've got some styling issues. And the other thing that happens is um, a lot of this stuff doesn't look right because we had styled it with our iPhone.css. Now again, you've already seen all this uh, in the previous video focusing on CSS. We could hide that, but then you've got this weird hybrid behavior of do you hide it for the iPhone and the iPad, or do you, you know, only show it on the iPhone? What do you do you know, if, you, if you go into portrait suddenly? 
um, you just have a lot of considerations that are a problem with really what amounts to a hybrid device. Um, and, and what we're going to find out is that it's actually even more difficult when you introduce JQ Touch. Um, it's like trying to charge, isn't it? It's even more difficult when you introduce JQ Touch because it's going to take some control away. So let's look at let's look at that because you're going to find out that unlike with pure CSS, we can't just change this at will like we could earlier. So once again, we have this weird kind of hybrid thing happening with the iPad where it's uh, wider than 480 pixels and so you don't get the iPhone feel, but you get this weird kind of browser feel. And in this case, uh, in some ways that's even more distracting because JQ Touch is giving us this sort of odd, um, you're on a web browser, but it feels like they think you're on a mobile device. Uh, now the problem with JQ Touch as opposed to CSS where we could muck with all this is the benefit you get of all these slide ins and slide outs and animations is kind of counterbalanced by the loss of control you have. So um, let's look at these files and you'll see what I mean. I'm going to open up index.html, which is the, the main work here. And if you look here, we've got some JQ Touch CSS files. So we've got um, the main one, and then we have a theme, and you can change the themes out. You can build themes that look good on Apple or across Android and so forth. Um, and then we do have our iPhone CSS, which is doing some things that are specific to the iPhone. But keep in mind that that's only um, that particular style sheet. The JQ Touch stuff applies across the board. And then we have this JavaScript. So you have jQuery, and then you have JQ Touch. Um, now, what's kind of what's kind of interesting about all this is that. Um, you don't have the ability to say, hey, only load this CSS style sheet if you're 481 to 1,024 pixels because, right? Because if you do that, then you've got to then write some conditional JavaScript to make sure that the scripting that applies it is only executed if, if the, the, the device type is so wide. Um, it gets into a big, hairy mess. And, and really, this is, um, this is probably my greatest concern with the web app field today. A month from now, the JQ Touch folks are going to have this ramped up, and we'll be back sitting right here um, trying to work through that and figure out what that looks like. But today, you're still left with this hybrid device. So what I want to do, I want to take a final look at the iPad and just talk through design-wise what you can do, because you're either stuck with the big, um, looks like a mobile device on an iPad, which is kind of disconcerting, or the um, website shrunken down. So what do we do with all this? Um, first and foremost, you, you probably want to think very carefully about how deeply you're going to integrate JQ Touch if you haven't already. Uh, and what, what I'd probably recommend there is you just wait a couple weeks. They're going to very quickly have an iPad um, release here that's going to cover iPad. I mean, the other thing that we haven't talked about is that in addition to a little bit of shakiness, like you saw just there, that flickering, some of these transitions are iPhone transitions that are really going to look different on the iPad, so I fully expect them to allow some of the pinching in and pinching out that is um, really a, a nice effect on the iPad. So you may just want to hold on. If you've already got JQ Touch running, you're going to have to dig into your CSS, and not the CSS of JQ Touch, but your alternate CSS. So I, I think that whereas beforehand you could have used just JQ Touch and a little bit of CSS to position, you know, this logo and so forth, you may need to um, build an iPad version that's also going to hide a bunch of stuff, but then show different things as appropriate. And you may need to take a lot more control of the full-on browser effect, because honestly, this just doesn't look that great. You lose all of the bottom. So um, you're going to have to do a lot more work. Now, that's not a bad thing, but it does mean that if you're getting ready to build web apps and you think those are going to be the magic bullet, um, you better gear up on your CSS, because you're going to have to do a lot of it. Um, I mean, the point of all this is not, hey, web apps aren't good. Um, native apps are the answer. That's, that's not at all what I would say. I think that both have a really important place. The main thing is that what once was very, very easy and what some people will still tell you is, hey, just do web apps and they work great. You don't have to, it's an open web. It's a little bit of a smoke screen there. Um, there's a reason that native apps look really, really good today and why at the end of the day, you know, some of these other things don't quite look good. Last but not least, you need to really play with this device because some of the things that we're used to in mobile Safari don't work. For instance, if I had just done that on my phone, I would be seeing Tim O'Reilly's face um, really big and over-pixelated. Um, you, you can't 
pinch and, and resize in the same way. So even some of the things that might work really well on a phone just don't track on the iPad. So approach this device like it's a new, new device. Use JQ Touch, use CSS, but use them more as tools instead of kind of this, um, hey, if I just throw JQ Touch on the top of this, everything's gonna look great. We're gonna come back in a couple weeks when JQ Touch is revved and, and kind of approach the same problem and see what it does. But until then, um, you know, kind of roll up your sleeves and make this thing do what you want under your own power instead of relying on the APIs.